Ryan Sellers are here with Broadcast Beat Magazine. We've got a special guest, Greg Heil with Encoding.com. How are you doing, Greg? Excellent, excellent. Thanks for having me. So tell us about Encoding.com and what you guys do. Sure. Um, Encoding.com is uh, the largest uh, video encoding provider, uh, provider of media processing service in a cloud-based software as a service model. Uh, started the company um, about eight years ago and so have uh, quite a mature um, API-based platform that serves over 3,000 customers now. Wow, that's cool. So you guys run out of uh, several data centers or something? We do. We're um, alive in 11 data centers around the world, uh, so you can geographically process your content closest um, to the source where the source video content is stored. Uh, we operate our own private cloud in Oakland, California, as well as um, live in all of Amazon's data centers globally. So tell me what uh, prompted you guys to, to start, uh, as you guys call it, the, a reserved cloud. Sure. Um, the reserved cloud um, was really born out of, of necessity um, and a void in the market um, where we saw customers developing pretty high volume mature workflows in a public cloud model like ourselves with a on-demand pay-as-you-go pricing. Most vendors either charge in a per minute or per gigabyte model. We charge in a per gigabyte model and have really um, you know, wanted a, a, a growth pattern, um, a way to um, um, continue to utilize all the benefits of cloud video encoding, which everyone's adopted wildly, but still have some control over their costs. Um, so in this model, a uh, customer would reserve an actual Amazon instance um, with us, and then we give them some configuration control to send unmetered, instead of per gigabyte cloud pricing, unmetered encoding volume um, to that server, and then give them a lot of control over how they can manage that queue. If they want to fail over automatically um, to the public cloud or not, what is their threshold or tolerance for queue time? So they can control and say, I don't want anything to fail over to the public cloud until 30 minutes has transpired or three seconds. Um, so we give them a lot of configuration control. And it's, it's really a great way to continue to grow with real high volume workflows um, and make sure you don't outgrow um, the on-demand public cloud pricing. Excellent. So um, what types of folks are, are, are using you guys? I'll give you an example. You know, I've been a post-production engineer for, for a long time. And, and we use we've used systems like you know Flip Factory, and we're looking at Vantage now, and stuff you know mm -hmm. products like that. So I assume you guys, well, I mean, even for large companies, you guys would be useful because there wouldn't be that capital expenditure that's taken into place for for purchasing that hardware and software, right? That's right. You know, when 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 I started the company eight years ago, you know, really um, we predominantly served short form. Um, you know, kind of low resolution content. Um, customers were news clips, uh, news organizations, television commercials, etc., user generated video content, um, things that were really easy to move around the public internet. Um, and, and really, as the business and the market has matured, we've moved to support, um, you know, more and more sophisticated workflows with. Um, real premium content, um, high value content that might be coming directly from the studios. And this is really because um, you know, a lot of the large media companies and broadcasters have now adopted um, cloud um, with um, a great, great degree of um, certainty. And they have uh, you know, adopted cloud storage. So once they have done that and put their source ass assets in cloud storage, it's a lot easier for them um, to then look at a model like ours where you can process that content within the same data center. 3,000 customers, you're spread between 11 data centers. That's a lot of files. I mean, do, do you, and, and, and you do all sorts of different formats? You pretty much do everything that someone would yeah, want? Yeah, you know, we've evolved, we've evolved from, from just doing video encoding, which, you know, way back when was, was usually, you know, one, one file into a couple different flash bit rates into um, now doing a whole suite of media processing. So um, closed captions, um, all of the adaptive bitrate standards, uh, programmatic playout and editing of content. Um, so a whole breadth of, uh, of features and functionality. We 
operate um, 30 different encoding engines. So open source engines that we maintain and operate as well as commercial engines uh, like Harmonix, Promedia Carbon, uh, and Carbon Express. So really we're in a unique position in that unlike other cloud offerings, um, we can stay um, agnostic um, to the engine provider and, and what we feel uh, on the front line is that there's a different encoding engine for many different use cases and it's a really great not to be just married to one engine we can be a lot more nimble and at the end of the day folks don't want to manage and maintain encoding engines I've yet to find a CTO of a big media company who's really excited about running their own encoding farm on premise you guys are obviously using some enterprise level transcoding stuff and so um, You've got to obviously, if you're taking the best of multiple worlds of these different types of transcoders, whether they're, you know, um, an enterprise grade product or an open source product, which would, could still be considered enterprise grade, but you're sure. getting the best of all these different worlds, and you're and you're you're probably using specific codecs for with specific transcoders and and so on. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. You know, when the when when the cloud video encoding market started, it was really based predominantly on, on open source engines, and there's nothing wrong with them at all. Um, we still maintain and operate many open source tools and, and heavily rely on them and, and feel like the quality is very broadcast grade. Um, however, um, you know, there's more sophisticated workflows um, at a data level where a broadcaster, for example, say, um, has an on-premise encoding farm um, that has a very mature, high volume workflow. All of their content has been QC'd with very, very specific um, encoding parameters and settings. And because they want to move to the cloud, doesn't mean they want to start all over with another engine and another QC process and another iteration of, of, of encoding parameters. So the ability to really offload on-premise enterprise workflows to the cloud is, is critical to our business. When a client wants to set up a, a transcode of a, of a certain type of file, and I've, I have not seen the interface yet, so I apologize, but no problem. If, if they want to set up a transcode, do they actually go into a web interface and say, I want to create, I want, you know, this, what, is it a watch folder? And, and then how do, how do you do that? Sure, yeah, that, that's um, a great question. So we have a variety of integration methods. Um, it's what we call them, our interfaces, where customers decide, um, you know, which um, interface meets their workflow best. And for 99% of our high volume customers, they want uh, a mature API integration. So they want to integrate our API into their legacy media management platform, um, content management system to automate that um, flow. For some customers, they want to just test the waters and test quality so they can do that in a user interface or like you mentioned, a watch folder where you can set up in a UI real quickly uh, our system to watch a cloud directory or an FTP directory on premise and set encoding parameters for that directory so that anytime new files are contributed to that source directory, they'll picked up, encoded, and delivered to their destination. Greg, thanks so much for spending your afternoon with us here at Broadcast Beat. Appreciate you having me, Ryan. All right, again, that was Gregory Heil with uh, Encoding.com CEO and founder. Have a great day.